Hello all. Quick update on the spherical parallel manipulator, the polar manipulator, and a metal polar manipulator for the labs and other sort of professional use uh, people that have asked me about that. Uh, the gist for those with short attention spans is 3D prints of the spherical and the polar manipulators will be out very soon, and uh, I've managed to make some interesting developments on that front to reduce hardware costs, etc. So it should be quite accessible. Um, first off though, let's cover the polar manipulator, which last time was like a bunch of random junk bolted together, just to demonstrate the idea. But this little guy down here is uh, the current working prototype. There's been a few. It's got a little lock or friction lock and let's give that a little bit more. You can see it's it does what it says on the tin. You can move it up and down to adjust, you know, for the length of object. And let me just bring you guys in. Just to show some of the design of it. It's quite straightforward and it is using mostly cheap parts. Um, the version that I'll release to everyone will be uh, sort of optimized to have, you know, a sort of universal work holding so people can pick whatever they want to put here. But I'm still using this little collet chuck, etc. Um, it's just using some cheap smooth rods from 3D printers. Uh, just a piece of threaded rod for the up and down. Um, and basically, like even the knobs could be 3D printed. So pretty much all of this except for some bolts and a couple of bearings and whatever you choose for the work holding can be 3D printed. And even the work holding could be 3D printed, you know, the community's cleverer than I am. Um, try and get both bits in shot for a sec. So you can see what it's like in use. So it is flexible. It is a 3D print after all, but making this super, super rigid requires a fair bit of money. And that's where the metal sort of polar manipulator for people who need one for professional use comes in. But the important thing is, is that even though it moves, it always sags to the same spot under gravity, and that's an intentional sort of design decision. So, I'll, um, and for a bit of scale on the magnification, have some, you know, human hair for scale. So, a fairly high magnification, you probably can't tell on this video, but the, um, only the front edge is in focus and the back edge is trailing off focus but it is a very usable tool for checking it, uh, inspecting things and so forth. And I have tested it with much higher magnification, but it's too fussy for this video. So uh, the print for this will be available very soon, just working on some optimizations for that. The only flaw it really has at the moment is I've temporarily glued mine to my microscope base, but it's too light, and in other tests I've been clamping it to the bench. The next version will have screw holes, you can screw it down to something. But, you know, it might be that we um, make a version that you... Uh, two 3D prints, clamshell around a, a chunk of steel or something to give it a little bit of mass at the base. But the actual hardware costs for that are incredibly low, and it's quite accessible. Now, I've had a number of um, labs and unis and entomologists and jewelers and all sorts contacting me about, you know, uh, acquiring one of these. You're all welcome to 3D print it, but um, I will do a short production run of a, like, fully metal uh, one with, you know, worm drives. So you turn the knob and it moves slowly and, and so forth. A proper professional sort of use one that bridges the gap between the, you know, 2000 to $50,000 stages that you can get and the, you know, nothing that's available at the moment. So it should be much more accessible for small labs and maker spaces and unis and so forth. Um, but yeah, I'll keep people updated on that one, but I'm working on that one in the background. In the meantime, the spherical polar manipulator has had some interesting developments. So the original one had ludicrous hardware because that's what I had on hand and it's all you know mixed and matched and stupid because again that's what I had on hand so in the original one we have let me just turn this down we have like precision ground shoulder bolts because I happen to have a packet of them it uses these 
uh, ridiculous micro bearings because I happen to have a bunch of them, but not quite enough to finish it, hence three larger bearings. I'd also used a piece of hardened bearing shaft that I then turned down and the bearings were press fit on it, um, along with Belleville washers, which are like a spring washer to make sure that the important note for all the makers out there that are unfamiliar with bearings, if you look very closely, there's a little inner race and an outer race. Why don't I point to the bigger one? Here's it scaled up. Inner race, outer race. If you've got a thing sitting flat against the bearing, they'll rub. So you need to only press on the bit, you know, if something's supposed to rotate with the inner race, it should only contact the inner race. And that's what the Belleville washers were used for. So this was a lot of hardware, some of it unnecessary. It was literally a one day project with stuff I had in the shelf. But I have managed to test, uh, it's in pieces at the moment, so I could show you all the hardware in it, but I've managed to test a working version with just this hardware. Note that I don't have three of these bearings yet, which is why I haven't got you the 3D print yet. I've only got two. Um, it'll be arriving this week, and once I've tested it, I'll be able to uh, you know, release the files. I just wanna make sure it works first. So what I've managed to achieve with this sort of reduction of hardware, uh, first off, the total estimated cost for all the hardware necessary for the spherical parallel manipulator not including the cost of 3D printing the parts, obviously, is under 10 US dollars, or about $13 Australian. Um, I'm currently in talks with uh, my Chinese bearing supplier to see if I can make a, a little kit that you can just go to the rally page, click one product, click buy, because these come in like packs of 10 and we only need three, and these come in packs of you know five or 10 and we need six. But I'll let you go, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Additionally, I've managed to replace the you know precision shoulder bolts with just standard you know a few cents at a hardware store bolts. Um, I've also designed it such that you can use M6 for everyone else in the world or quarter twenty for America, Libya, and Myanmar. I think they're the only three countries still using the imperial system. Um, on top of that, I've chosen a bearing that uh, for the large bearings in the base. I basically scoured through all the bearings available. You know, these have the same inner diameter, but these ones are extremely cheap. These ones are not. So I've optimized the design to use basically the cheapest bearings possible in each place. These bearings here are essentially skate bearings, but with a flange, which makes them much easier to work with. And the total cost for them is, a, you know, well, as I said, it's under $9, under $10 for the whole lot. Uh, what else have I uh, tested? Oh, yes, I've also tested... Where did it go? Let's grab another one. Also tested replacing the Belleville washers with a 3D printed bearing spacer that essentially ensures only contact with that inner race, but on the tiny bearings, and that works fine. So I've had the whole spherical parallel manipulator assembled with bolts instead of shoulder bolts, 3D printed washers instead of Belleville washers, letting the bolt cut its own thread in a 3D part instead of using nylock nuts, uh, and it's all worked fine. So we're basically down to, you know, minimal hardware. On top of that, I even tested a 3D printed shaft. Now this is just a lone shaft, but because we're 3D printing it, it'll be integral to a bunch of other stuff and it'll be, you know, turn three parts into one. But it does work with just a uh, 3D printed shaft instead of a piece of hardened bearing shaft turned on a lathe. So yeah, the reduction in hardware I'm quite proud of. It should be quite accessible for all those who want to make one to mess around. Um, and I'll also be making the designs, you know, I'll, I'll release the SDLs, but also release the CAD files so people can modify it to suit whatever the hell they want to do. Um, especially as, you know, the work holding, if I just pop this guy out, so it just comes out of the other guy. The work holding in my current setup is one of these bearings, well, 25 mil version, with a cut down collet block stuck in it but this is quite specific to my needs for looking at end mills and so forth. The community can design whatever suits them, whatever works, and I'll just make a, yeah, not exactly this, but this kind of idea, an interchangeable end piece, and you can put whatever work holding you want there. And that'll make it, um, people will be able to customize it for their use case. Some people want to paint minifig, some people want to look at you know gemstones uh, on their um, dob sticks for faceting, 
Uh, there's en entomologists that want to look at bugs, etc. I can't design work holding that suits all of them, but all I, what I will make is the files easy to modify and the recess that holds the work holding somewhat universal so you can 3D print an adapter to put whatever you want there. Um, let's see, what else is in my notes to cover for you guys? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The um, I'm looking into making a short production run of a metal uh, polar manipulator because I've had a number of universities reach out to me saying they'd like to, you know, buy one, etc. Um, I'll be working on that and give you guys an update soon, but uh, yeah, for now, hold tight. We'll have the design out for you in no time.